Hello YouTube, this is Skip, coming to you live, straight out of Real Housewives Aquatic Kennels. And I'm making this video by special request, again. We're going to have a little bit of a Q&A session. After my last series, where we talked about the mitosiglet complex, I received a lot of questions from you guys. So, after receiving a certain amount of questions from you and even some distributors, some major distributors out here who sell you guys fish, I figured I was obligated to answer a few questions. Okay, let's start with question number one. Skip, what is a subspecies? What does subspecies mean? I guess I mentioned subspecies quite a few times in my last video series. So I, I need to elaborate a little bit more on subspecies. Okay, my definition of a subspecies, and you can look this up online or Google it or what have you, and do your own research and due diligence. But my definition of subspecies is that a subspecies is an organism that belongs to a different subspecies of the same species. They are capable of interbreeding and producing fertile offspring but they often do not interbreed in the wild or in nature due to geographical isolations or other factors the difference between the subspecies are usually less distinct than the difference between species okay let's elaborate a little bit more on that We talked about the Amarillo, Chancho, Hoga Boomer, Isolators, all those different subspecies of the Midas, Centronella, and Gunther. Now the Midas is the species that all those other subspecies have derived from or evolved from. You have to know a little bit about evolution in order to truly understand what I'm talking about. And you also have to know the difference between a species and, let's say, per se, a genus. Now, understand this aquatic community. A genus is a group of closely related species. Get this, closely related species. Like, for example, the Midas species share the genus Amphilopus with labianums, Lion's eyes, festays, trimets, etc., etc., etc. Now, a subspecies is a certain population of species that has slightly different characteristics and adaptations due to their wild habitat or environment. Y'all understand, the environment can change the complexity of these fish. They can actually adapt to their environment, although it may be slightly different. Now you may say, well, how did that come about? No one can actually prove without a shadow of a doubt how, these, how the mite is cyclic came to be in certain crater lakes in Central America. Some people say the native was farming them in di different crater lakes, so they was taking them out of Nicaragua and taking them all the way to uh, isolated crater lakes that's hard to get to and was farming them. Some people say it was by storm or some type, some type of hurricane lift all the fish up and drop them down in the, in the crater lake. You know, that may seem a little far-fetched, but who knows? Who knows what's possible? Other different reasons. But regardless of the fact, we do know for a fact by doing genetic research that all those species have evolved from one particular species and that's the Midas centronella. Now you may recall I mentioned that the subspecies are not different enough from the species to be considered its own species. So some people may ask, when do you consider the fish its own species? Only time will tell that. But right now, 
I do know that the Chancho, the Amarillo, the Sag, the Hogaboom are subspecies of the Midas Centronella. They're the same species. They're all Midas. But they're just a little bit different from each other due to their natural habitat or environment. So I hope that was a little helpful for you guys in that aspect. I, I have other examples I can share with you, but I don't really want to go into all that. You know, like the tigers. Tigers have evolved from or, or are subspecies of saber-toothed tigers. You got, I believe, like six or seven different species of tigers. One is a Siberian tiger. Another one's a Bengal tiger, the uh, Malaysian tiger, the Indian tiger. And they all have certain, diff certain characteristics that separates them from the other tigers. At the end of the day, they're still tigers. They're just subspecies of the original saber-toothed tiger. Just like the woolly mammoth and the African elephant and the Asiatic elephant. They all derive from that woolly mammoth. Different characteristics, different subspecies. I hope that helped you out a little bit more. Now, of course, there were other questions like, what is evolution? Skip, we keep talking about evolution. Man, it, this could take forever for me to explain all that. It is not that easy. It's not that cut and dry. It's not that black and white to explain the theory of evolution. Because the theory of evolution is just that, a theory. Some of the stuff that's within that theory has been proven scientifically, but it's still a theory. And the theory that's continuously being worked on and they're working the kinks out. But if you have some idea what the theory of evolution, or evolution mean, then you know that it basically tell you how we get these, these different variety of species. How do these species came to existence coming from a low life form of species and they spawn millions of different species with different characteristics but that I leave for you guys to do your research on another question was asked to me was what what is mutation a gene mutation is a, a like a permanent change to the DNA sequence of a genome Mutation can occur any it, randomly. Most mutations are random. I mean, it can occur if you keep interbreeding your cichlids or, or your mitis, since we're talking about mitis. They'll start dropping off certain characteristics and they'll start mutating into something totally different. That's another uh, word that you need to look up the definition of. Now, my next question that was asked of me was, Skip, what do you mean by long snout and short snout Midas? I thought you said all Midas had short snouts and anything with a longer snout was considered a My Devil or a hybrid or, or Labianus. That's not exactly what I said. I said we have short snout and we have long snout Midas, meaning that some Midas, like this guy, Big Casanova, has a short snout. You see how it's rounded and it's squared off at the end? Ah, uh, I see some fry over here. A big slugger. Ah, uh, yeah. See like this guy, slugger? Short snout. Now, a longer snout Midas will be like a Saggy or a Hoga Boomerang. or Zadiosis arrow. Their mouths protrude outwards a little bit, but still rounded. They don't come to a point like this guy. This is a hybrid. This is a my devil. Check out his mouth. It comes to a complete point. He's about four inches now. I got it from someone who claimed that he was a Midas, but as I did further research and checked him out, as he got bigger, I could clearly see that this is a My Devil. Look at his mouth. It comes to a V, just like that nutcracker. 
it not only protrudes outwards, but it comes to a V-like point. Unlike these guys. Now that Midas is around the same size as these. But as you can see, there's a rounded. They stick out a little bit, but they come to a round tip, not a pointed tip. And also, these Midas are still young. So as they mature and develop, their faces start to fill in, their mouths will start to spread, and their mouths will be even flatter than they are now. Unlike the Saggy and the Earl and the Hoka Boomerang, as they get older and their face fell out, it is still protrude outwards a little bit, but still rounded to the end and not at a point. So I hope that helped you guys out. I hope this Q&A was helpful and insightful. And now I can move on to my next video series. This skip, you know the saying. <laughs>